not just New South Wales, it's also Victoria that have abandoned their elimination strategy. I don't think Jacinda Ardern is at the point yet where she will abandon elimination strategy because she's deluded into thinking that she's the only person in the world that knows how to handle Delta. This is despite the evidence from Israel, from the UK, from Iceland, from India uh, and from Australia that there is no way that you can eliminate Delta and there's no way that you can control Delta even with vaccines. So she will dig in and stay on this for the long haul even though there's a huge cost to the economy of New Zealand. Absolutely, I agree with that. It's been nothing but a political power play. We know from the information from the Japanese embassy website, we know from uh, anecdotal evidence of cancellations ahead of the announcement, that the government has been just waiting for somebody in the community to appear to have Delta so that they could throw us back into lockdown. The government's uh, poll ratings have been plummeting in their own internal polling and in published polls out there. They know that the only thing that they can hang their hat on for any sort of success is COVID response. And so they really wanted another lockdown and I believe that it was a political decision, not a health decision that was made. Government isn't driving anything. Uh, they can't even run a bath, let alone a health system. What's being done is that uh, the country is being run by health boffins who have no, apps, no uh, indication that they have any grasp on what reality is for businesses. They're putting in ridiculous uh, uh, ideas that as they come to mind, the latest being a border control system for Auckland that tests truck drivers uh, whether they've got COVID or not. The entire supply chains of the country are run out of Auckland and all that's going to do is slow up, uh, slow up the supply chains, which are already constrained in a major way. Uh, there's no, no politician worth his salt would agree to restrictions like that or entertain you know, the sorts of things that people like Michael Baker, etc. are proposing where we have lockdowns forever. Um, politicians have to weigh up the choice you know, between whether we destroy the economy to save a few people or we just learn to live with Delta. They're not at that point in making that decision yet. They think they can save everybody. The opposition parties are doing heaps. You know, we're publishing their press releases on a daily basis, sometimes 15 to 20 a day. The problem that we've got is that uh, it, the perception is the opposition aren't doing anything, but the problem with that perception is it's based on uh, uh, people being able to read what the opposition is doing in the mainstream media. The mainstream media have shown through the media bias website that they are com complete, completely locked in for the left wing. On top of that, they're in receipt of millions upon millions of dollars of state subsidies. The mainstream media have become state funded media and as a consequence, the opposition doesn't get a look in. So the opposition actually needs to use alternative sources like the BFD, social media, etc. to get their message out. I think they're doing a great job. Uh, the people who aren't doing a great job are the, are the media. They are doing their jobs well. I mean, there's some of the wetter folk in National that are still trying to litigate the leadership of Todd Muller, etc. Um, but largely they're being ignored. Uh, but the same problem is occurring around all the other issues that they're trying to raise on the non-performance of the government, the abject failure of Kiwi Build, of you know, the light rail project, of any number of social indicators that have gone backwards. And that's getting the, the bought and paid for uh, government shills in the media to actually cover it. So uh, you know, they are doing a great job, but uh, it's not being recognised because the media have pretty much got them on silent mode. Um, the opposition parties are going to have to find a way around that. Uh, it shouldn't influence the next election. It's more than two years away. But Jacinda Ardern will want it to influence the next election because it's the only thing that she can say that she succeeded at. 
that she eliminated, as she says, the, the virus. But she hasn't eliminated it because it's still in the country. It's still uh, coming here. The MIQ system is a failure. It's been breached multiple times. Uh, and we're in lockdowns again. So she clearly didn't eliminate the virus. So hanging your hat on that uh, as a success rate is only doomed to failure. We're at a crossroads now. We've got, you know, the ACT Party, for example, that is supposedly a libertarian party that has principles and they constantly tell people they've got principles. But when it turns out that uh, that when you scratch the surface underneath the ACT Party, they're actually you know, just like the Labour Party. And you've got to remember that's where the ACT Party came from. They came out of Labour, not out of National. So they're all in with the government on you know mask mandates they're all in with the government on ensuring that we have compulsory check-ins and i'm pretty sure that david seymour based on his other statements about vaccines will be wanting to push for vaccine passports and and you know further segregating society and putting up barriers and allowing for the persecution of unvaccinated people we don't do it for any other disease so why are we doing it for this so I think we're on a cusp here. We're going to see a split in New Zealand society that's going to be polarising. Uh, it'll be those who support freedom versus those who su support fascism.